15 Things You Didn't Know About Kevin O'Leary. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers and welcome to another exciting original video presented by Alux.com. Today's video focuses on yet another entrepreneur that came from a modest background and went on to make millions. This businessman, television personality and author is a native Canadian and has dabbled in politics. Today we're talking about Kevin O'Leary. If you've missed our previous videos on the sharks, we recommend you watch those after this one. Terence Thomas Kevin O'Leary was born on July 9, 1954 in Montreal, Quebec. His mother lent him $10,000 to start his first business, an educational software company called SoftKey. In 1995, SoftKey purchased a company called The Learning Company for $606 million and adopted its name. In 1999, Mattel bought The Learning Company for $4.2 billion. Mattel lost $105 million after the purchase, and it became known as one of the most disastrous acquisitions in recent history. O'Leary cut ties with Mattel soon after. In 2008, he started O'Leary Funds, a mutual fund company that now manages over a billion dollars in assets. He is well known for his participation in the popular show Shark Tank, starring in every season since 2009. He also starred in a Canadian show called The Dragon's Den, with a similar concept as Shark Tank from 2006 to 2014. In January 2017, Kevin entered the race for conservative leadership in Canada, drawing some comparisons between him and Donald Trump. Even though he was leading in most polls, he dropped out of the race in April 2017. Okay, enough with the background. Let's get to the 15 things you didn't know about Kevin O'Leary. Number 1. He refuses to purchase Starbucks coffee. In O'Leary's book Cold Hard Truth on Men, Women, and Money, he speaks of the concept of ghost money, which he describes as dead money that is wasted on stupid things that should have been invested. He sees Starbucks as an example of this. He said that if he saw an intern drinking Starbucks coffee, that he would fire them because they are not making smart financial decisions. He says there's no way he would spend $2.50 on a 15 cent cup of coffee. Number 2. He closes every big deal at the same table with the same pen. Kevin says there is a table in the back corner of the Taj Hotel in Boston, formerly the Ritz, where every deal that's been important to him has been done. Anytime he's getting ready to close a big deal, he makes sure he's sitting at the same table, which he says holds good karma for him. He's also brought the same pen with him since 1995. Number 3. He got his nickname of Mr. Wonderful on the first season of Shark Tank. On a season 1 episode where Kevin pushed to acquire 51% of a music publishing business because he wanted control of the company, his co-shark Barbara remarked, well aren't you Mr. Wonderful? He responded with, you know what Barbara, I am. The name has stuck with him ever since, to the point where he can make hotel reservations under the name with no questions asked. Number 4. He makes 45 cents for every cupcake sold by Wicked Good Cupcakes. One of the best investments Kevin made on Shark Tank was giving Boston-based cupcake company Wicked Good Cupcakes $75,000, with $1 of each cupcake going to him until his investment was paid back. The owners paid back the loan in full, a mere 74 days later, but Kevin continues to rake in the profits at $0.45 cents a cupcake. This might seem like a lot, but the Wicked Good Cupcakes sell for over $7 a piece. Number 5. Kevin has one of the most valuable wine collections in the world. Kevin is very passionate about wine. He has his very own line of wine that he sold a record-breaking 40,000 cases of in one day on QVC. He says he and a small group of guys have a secret wine cellar in Cambridge, built underground in an undisclosed location. There's millions of dollars worth of wine in that cellar, and they are constantly adding to their collection. Number 6. His favorite place to live is Boston. He may be a native Canadian, but Kevin's favorite place to live is Boston. He lives in a brownstone home on the prominent Marlboro Street, just two blocks away from the Boston Public Garden. The 2,300 square foot condo is a dream come true for Kevin. Ever since he first started out in business, he wanted to live on that street. He purchased the condo in 1999, and although he owns residences in Los Angeles, Switzerland, and in Canada, he says that Boston is his home. Number 7. He claims he's been on every beach on the planet. 
Kevin has traveled all over the world, and he claims that he has been on every beach on the planet, but he says he finds them boring. His ideal vacation is visiting Beaune, France, where he has no cell phone or internet service. He likes to walk the streets that were built in medieval times and drink from noon until 2 in the morning. Number 8. He Never Misses a Patriots Game no matter where in the world Kevin is, he always finds a way to watch every Patriots football game. He says it gets complicated at times, but no matter if he's in Europe, Asia, or Cambodia, or if it's 2 a.m. or 4 a.m., he'll be watching the game. Number 9. He had planned on becoming a photographer. Before his stepfather convinced him to go to business school, he had planned on pursuing a career in photography. But throughout his life, he has never abandoned his love of being behind the camera, and he launched his first photo exhibit in 2013, entitled Kevin O'Leary, 40 Years of Photography. It included pictures he took in dozens of countries over four decades. The exhibit traveled around Canada, and people were able to purchase his photographs, with proceeds going toward grants that encourage entrepreneurship. Number 10. O'Leary's political campaign was over $200,000 in debt when he dropped out. Kevin received over $1 million in campaign contributions when he decided to run for the Conservative leadership of Canada, with the aim of defeating Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in 2019. He dropped out just a few months later, leaving his campaign with over $200,000 in debt. According to the rules of the Commissioner of Elections Canada, O'Leary is not able to pay the debt himself or loan the campaign money. So he will need to convince individuals to contribute a maximum of $1,550 each to his abandoned campaign until his debts are cleared. If you want to learn more about other politicians with deep pockets, click on the top right hand corner to watch our video of the top 10 richest politicians in the world. Number 11. He and his wife nearly got divorced. Kevin married his wife Linda in 1990 after six years of dating, but in 2011, they separated for two years. Kevin said that they were at the point of splitting up the assets, but couldn't go through with the divorce. They've been happily married ever since they reconciled, and she serves as the VP of Marketing for O'Leary Wines. Number 12. He owns a summer cottage in Muskoka, Canada. Sometimes called the Malibu or the Hamptons of the North, Muskoka is a scenic region in Ontario, Canada. The area has more vacation homes than permanent residents, and it's a popular retreat for the rich and famous, including Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, Martin Short, Kurt Russell, and Cindy Crawford. Kevin's cottage is actually a 9,000 square foot house with seven bedrooms, four fireplaces, and a wine cellar carved into native rock, a boathouse with three boat slips, and a second floor sun deck. Number 13. He loves to play guitar. One of Kevin's passions outside of business is music, and he likes to play guitar in particular. At the 2013 American Music Awards, he was seen playing guitar with One Direction guitarist Dan Richards on the red carpet. He has an extensive guitar collection, including one of his most prized possessions, a signed Gibson Les Paul guitar. Kevin said that he met with the legendary guitarist Les Paul, and they had a jam session together which ended in Kevin receiving the guitar. Number 14. He is not planning on giving his kids any of his money. Kevin has two grown children, a daughter named Savannah and a son named Trevor, but they shouldn't be counting on piggybacking off their father's success. Kevin said that he's made it clear to his children that they need to make their own way in life. He says that if rich parents don't kick their kids out of the house to experience the stresses of the real world, they will fail to become successful adults. Kevin says as soon as his children complete their education, he will no longer financially support them. Number 15. He wears a suit every single day. Every single day, Kevin wakes up and puts on a suit. He prefers either Tom Ford or Prada. He owns roughly 50 suits at a time and says they all have been custom created to fit him perfectly. Now that you've learned some interesting facts about Kevin O'Leary, do you honestly think he would have done a good job as the Prime Minister of Canada? Let us know in the comments. Oh, and here's a bonus fact for those of you still with us. Because of his father's Irish roots, Kevin actually holds dual Canadian and Irish citizenship and travels with an Irish passport. 
Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy. Or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.